This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles, on the Rockstar Radio Network. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd on the Rockstar Radio Network. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, top of the day to everybody. We have a show we haven't actually done before. Um, there's there's all kinds of things that come together in making a book. But there's also a lot of things that have to come together in launching the book and adding to the book's uh, portal to the world. And some people poo-poo it. Some people say you can't go leave home without it. I am going to join the latter group. Because I think that everybody needs a website that rocks and rolls. And sometimes you need several websites. You may need just a page front for a book. You may need a uh, full-blown page or or site that has all kinds of pages within it. And so we're going to talk about those variances. And we're also going to talk about how do you take payments on your website? How do you monetize your website? And with me for the hour is going to be Marty Dickinson. Marty is the guru and the brains behind a company called Here Next Year. And he will tell you how that came about. But I want to welcome Marty to the program. Hi, Marty. How are you today? Hey, Judith. I am terrific. Thanks for having me again. Well, I am thrilled to have you again. Marty's going to be one of our speakers at the Author You Extravaganza um, that's just three plus weeks away here at the mothership of Author You in Denver, Colorado. And Marty is really going to be talking about not websites, but how to get brutal with Google, which he knows a heck of a lot about. But I wanted him to come back and talk about websites because he's one of the co-authors of Websites for Dummies. And I don't know about some of our listeners, but I sometimes I feel pretty dumb when it comes to websites. So undumb us, Marty. Let's let's start in on that. Why a website? How is it different from the way they were just a few years ago? And what should authors be doing really specifically for them to to make their their websites rock and roll? Well just Answers to those few questions could take the whole hour right there. Okay, well, <laughs> and, and you know hour. us. When we get together, all we have to do is start talking, and all of a sudden, all kinds of great concepts and ideas come out. So, but let, let's hit that one up front because it seems like everywhere I turn, new books are coming out, presentations are being made, blog posts are being made from people saying, why even have a website anymore? All you need is a page on Facebook or or go to Google Plus and start a page on there. You don't need a website anymore. Stop paying these people thousands of dollars to get a website. And and I just, I really think that that is exactly backwards. I, I think that I mean, number one, the the biggest reason of all that you have to have a website today is because it's really the only thing that you can control on the Internet. When you get a page on Facebook or a page on Google+, Plus, if you start promoting things incorrectly or somebody just happens to hack into your page, I mean, there's so many things that can happen. Facebook and Google+, Plus, Twitter, all these places can take you down. They can just stop your whole account without without any notice. They just do it. I mean, they own the website. So just for that reason, you have to have that one place that you can call your own. But there's another important reason, too, and that is that I, I think with the advent of WordPress, WordPress has been around for so long, most people have heard the word before now, and you go to any seminar, you're going to hear the word WordPress at least 15 times by every speaker. Everybody uses WordPress, it seems like. And and I think because of the way that WordPress works, it's really, it, it's it's made a whole new level out there for, for the importance of a website. And, and I, I like to think of it as a heart. I believe that your your company or book website, whichever you, you choose as that one center place to own, that's like the heart of everything that you do on the Internet. So 
everything you do, all the social networks, all the SEO, everything that you do, all the different websites that you might have, they should all come back to that main hub, that main core area, and that's really your heart. I mean, how long would we, how long would any of us survive if we didn't have a, a really strong heart? So, so that's that's the first answer to that question. Okay, all right. And so, I, what I'm really, I think, what really pops out here, really important, because you got me onto WordPress a long time ago, and so I'm really very glad we did that. But it's the control word. And how critical it is for authors to be able to have feel they have some semblance of control of what's going on. And, I mean, I know uh, people who are abandoning the Facebook page because they just feel it's gone nuts with all the morphing. And you finally figure out what's, how to work the thing with all the tools and the features and all the things that they offer in Facebook. And two weeks goes by and you have to relearn the whole software again because their programmers just decided one day to change everything. It's yeah, really difficult um, to keep up with the, the, I mean, and that's just Facebook. Everybody else is doing the same thing. All these other social networks are constantly adding features and changing the layouts and where things are. It's tough. It's tough to keep up with. I think yeah. a lot of people really beat themselves up over this, too. I, I, I mean, I, a lot of people take it personally that um, you know, they're not technical people. I can't understand this. I can't learn this feature, this software quick enough. And it's partly because of the developers that are creating this, this, uh, these tools that they're, they're making it difficult and they're making it hard to keep up with. And then they change things. So I, I mean, I, people listening to this, I'd encourage them to, number one, if, if you're struggling with marketing your website or your book or your speaking or whatever product it is, don't take it so personally. I mean, <laughs> let's, let's, Give ourselves a break out there because we're we're up against some pretty difficult times. These are these are very complex times on the internet. Everybody's trying to reinvent things and take things to the next level. And I mean, this is part of life. We need to be able to adapt to these new things that are, that are coming out. But it is not easy, and you are not alone. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm a firm believer that if you've got a book which our listeners either have one or they're in the process of creating a book, is that if you don't start embracing um, what's going on in Internet land, your book is going to be in deep doo-doo in a nanosecond. I mean, you really have to do it. So we have, we, we're, we're gonna, let's just say, all right, everyone, you're going to do a website. So, Marty, what are the top three questions, really, that an author needs to address before they come full square, either whether it's bringing a website out of the ground or they're morphing one they already have? Well, it's all going to come down to money. It, that's, that's the number one question that I get. All right, Marty, how much does a website cost? Mm-hmm. And it's, I think people need to understand that there are so many different levels of a website now. You really have to formulate a number in your mind of what you can live with. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, and I know that, that websites have seemingly, seemingly become a commodity, so you send out a quote to five different designers, you're going to pick the one that, that, that gives you all the features you want for $75. And, and then 5RR comes, comes around, and, well, now I can get everything for $5. Yay! And I believe it's the exact opposite. Because, again, you know, we're talking about the heart, right? I mean, the heart is the most important part of your entire business. Why would you try to cut so many corners to get just the cheapest deal out there or to get everything for free? It doesn't make sense. I think of it more of like going to the store to buy a computer. When you go to buy a computer, you figure out, I, I want the fastest machine I can get. I want the most RAM. I want the, the mm-hmm. biggest hard drive. I even want an external hard drive so I can have video. And I want the biggest, the fastest, and I, I'm, I can spend this much. And, oh, if I just upgrade a little bit more for another $400, I can get this whole big, giant computer that's even better. That's the way we need to look at websites. We mm-hmm. need to have a team involved with producing these things, and we need to consider that website project as being the hub of everything we do, the most important thing of, every do, of everything that we do on the web, and really change our thinking that, the best way to do it is to have a shoestring or a no-string. I, I like that term, a no-string budget, <laughs> meaning mm-hmm. you're not going to put any money into this at all. I mean, it, it's just a, you're setting yourself up for failure when you do that. 
Well, if I mean you talk about Fiverr, Intuit offers one for four ninety five, but you <laughs> for do- <laughs> for dollars for dollars and ninety five cents. But that what you get is uh, what you get. So I, I think that when I went through the process, and you and I have built two websites, um, one for the Book Shepherd and one for Author You, and that I thought one of the things that was very important to do that you had us do with our, our pre what you call a pre flight was that we went out and looked at websites to find websites that we loved. And and then you were very specific and you asked, what is it that you like? Is it the color? Is it the graphic? Is it the shaping? Is it the positioning? Is it feel you know what it was. But the other thing I thought was always equally important is find stuff that you don't like. And we actually looked at people that we put into maybe competitive area and what is it that didn't work, that didn't appeal, that didn't like. And I thought that was a very important exercise. Well, I'll add a third on to that. Okay. And that is the question of what do your visitors expect to see when they get to your website? And that is the most difficult question of all because what you would want in a website and what I would, would want in a website could be completely different from what our target audience is expecting to see when they get there. And if we just make this website for you or for me, well, we've got a thousand other people out there that we haven't made happy, and you know how fast we all click the back button on that website. So to, so I always like to suggest to people when we're in that pre-flight meeting to sort of have an outer body experience, <laughs> if you can, and picture yourself being a thousand people out there that are in your direct target market that are just, I mean, they're, put yourself in their position. They've been looking around for you, for your solution, for your book, for weeks, maybe months, maybe it's 3 o'clock in the morning and, and they, they, they've just come to their wit's end. They, there is no solution out there and they land on your website. What does that website look like? What, 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 are, what are they going to see in the first five seconds? It's a really critical decision to make right there. And the, the cleaner it is, I think the better it is. Um, on looking at, but you have to also decide. So, what is clean in your arena on on what you're going to be doing? All right. So, in when you did the dummies book, what kind of ahas? I mean, I'm an author of multiple books as well. What did you have any gems or ahas that came through to you when you were when you were putting that together with your co-authors? Oh dear! I actually, after we were done with the first one, I told the the organizer of the book that I'd never do it again. <gasps> and you're doing it again. And I'm doing it again, yep. All right, so we're going to come back and find out what changes Marty's going to make in websites for dummies. This is Judith Bryles. You're listening to your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Is there a book in you or another? Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed punch and panache author you is for you if you're a hobbyist or a casual author it's not join author you today through its website at author follow author you on twitter at author you and on facebook at author you where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily author you where the author goes to become seriously successful Change the way you publish online. WaveCloud is a new form for authors to manage all their books' information in one place from start to finish, including pricing and listing summary. To learn more or sign up for email updates, visit wavecloud.com.
Every picture tells a story. And it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303 985 4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, I was talking with Marty offline because Marty is one of our speakers at the Author Extravaganza, and one of the great things is all the wonderful sponsors you hear, the printers, the designers, the community builders, will all be here in Denver at the Mothership, the Mile High City. We have glorious weather in, the, in May here, and um, I will tell you all for the Extravaganza, the John Kramer event on May 3rd is sold out. But we do have one spot we've held back, and so for anyone who signs up from now on, we are just going to take all the names, we will put them in a pot, and we will, or a hat, or a basket, or a bag, or something, and we will pull one out, and you will win a slot that right now is worth $97 to spend four hours and get fed. And remember, at the extravaganza, which all the details, all the information, 11 sensational speakers, um, you can find them at authoru.org, where we will feed your brain and your belly. Okay, so Marty, we were talking about things, and you would never write another book again. I know that you have just <laughs> finished <laughs> the revisions. For websites for dummies. So, what's new in it? Well, I, I remember the very first book that I wrote in 2004 it was that one I self published. It was called Winning the Internet Dogfight. And right. at a, a workshop I did after that, I, uh, I remember saying to the audience that writing a book is the closest that a guy can get to, ha to experiencing having a baby. Yeah. Because you go through all the same experiences, you go through the the, the joy of the thing starting and um, you know the honeymoon night, whatever <laughs> you want to call that, and then then you have the peaks and troughs of the emotion going through the whole process, and then you give birth, and then you have to raise the thing. I mean, it's not you, you don't just give birth to the book and it's done. You've got to get out there and sell it, and and it's a lot like having a having a baby. So uh, you get the the joy and the pain all all together. <laughs> yeah, and the reality of of having a baby those nine months from conception to birth turn out to be the easy part <laughs> so for our authors that's the writing part although a lot of you may thinking are you freaking kidding Bryles it's that is just horrendous no your real book starts now once that book gets birthed now and it's the marketing and I would encourage everyone yeah. you know as Marty's saying to, to grow it to develop it if you go to the author you uh, blog. It is all about that, and it's really titled this week's blog is "Stop the Insanity." Um, you have got to market and support your book. Otherwise, go bang your head on the wall. Right. I mean, it's, it's, if you're not going to do it, 
don't go through this process. You know, yeah. don't just stare at your belly button for a while. So, um, what what new? Let's come back to this. So, what was new? I mean, you wrote that book a few years ago. Yep. What's what? What's some of the evolutions that have yeah. happened? Well, the the most important thing I think that has changed since back then and now is that I, I think we're we're all able to really streamline the process a lot more. Like in the last book. They wanted me to write about the different kinds of websites that you could have, for example, like Joomla mm-hmm. and Drupal and all these all these different tools that you could have out uh. there. And and now I'm like, hey, you know, you don't have to look at all that stuff. You need to get WordPress, <laughs> and mm-hmm. you need to get it set up right, and you need to get a custom uh, design so that you're you get into the whole branding process, and you have to have good copywriting, and then you have to come back to optimize that website for Google. Because I mean, as as sexy as it is for Facebook and Google Plus and all these that I, I'm always talking about, yeah, we need them. They're they're great traffic builders. Uh, I, I I'll have this. I'll be presenting this more formally at uh, in the extravaganza, of course. But I mean, there, there's a very small percentage of people. It's like eight percent or something of people who have actually bought something on Facebook as a result of searching for something on Facebook. And you, you hear this all this talk that people are now using Facebook like a search engine. Well, yeah, there are some people like that, but the sales that have actually happened as a result of searching on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and all these are, are very small compared to the 65-plus percent of people in the past year that have searched for something on Google and bought something. So, so what you're saying is that if you're going to do any ad money, I'm going, to, I'm going to take this another step. If you're going to pay for ads, you're really smarter just to stick with Google. Is that what I'm hearing? I'm saying that you still need to optimize your website so that pages of your website come up on Google. Because yes, it, okay. It, because, I mean, getting, getting your website on top of Google is not the sexiest thing out there anymore because everybody's talking about QR codes and, and all the uh, – Pinterest is out now, so everybody focuses their attention on Pinterest. And, and so we, we tend to step away from the things that have worked for a long time, and Google's one of those. I mean, every – I, I, I can't wait to ask the audience, how many people in the past three days have searched for something on Google? And, I mean, everybody in the room is going to raise their hand. <laughs> it's of a slam dunk answer. Unless yeah. they pull, pull a trick on me because they're listening to this call now. <laughs> but no. we, we still need to have that focus for, for using Google. So we, we can use all these different tools and techniques and all the social networks to boost our rankings on Google, and it's still a, a hugely viable uh, way to promote your book and sh- showcase yourself as an expert in your field. Well, I would say, you know, just uh, you, if you ask me that question, I am on Google at least 15 times a day looking for stuff. I'm always I'm sure there. you are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm always, uh, actually, Google is always open on my desktop. <laughs> That's so how's that? Google would be happy to know that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Google and, uh, and uh, let's see, Hootsuite is Hootsuite, open. Yeah. And, um, and actually, because of what I do with the author you, a premium web cart is a lot yeah. of times, you know, yeah. our portal that we use. Definitely. Which, yeah, and, and so. I'll, I'll, I'll showcase another one, too. Uh, Bing is a very important search engine, too, especially if you work with Google AdWords. And I know it's probably going to be a small percentage that, that uh, authors would be using Google AdWords to promote their book, but a lot of people use, use, um, use pay-per-click advertising to promote their business. And that's a, mm-hmm. surely a great way to do it. It's also a great way to use pay-per-click advertising to test your copywriting, just to mm-hmm. have a campaign for about three weeks and plan on plan, just plan on blowing five hundred bucks. You're, you're going to put five hundred dollars into testing your copywriting to see if to see what it is that will get people to convert into a paying customer for your book. And the the, the old way to do that used to be with with Google's pay per click uh, Google AdWords campaigns. But that's that's it's really become a very complex thing in itself. So a lot of people have moved to Bing advertising, which is owned by Microsoft, of course, and they get a they get a good a good amount of traffic. Traffic, probably about mm, 15 to 20 percent the amount of search traffic that Google does, but it's really a great place to to try some pay-per-click advertising and test your copywriting. 
Mm-hmm. All right. So and that's something I haven't done any of the pay-per-click stuff. So I, I'm guilty of that. All right. So let's come back to website development because I know this is really your expertise. And, and I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm thinking out loud here since we are, you know, we're on the Internet. And is there anything that you want to tell our listeners because they're listening live as well as they we do a huge amount of follow-up uh, downloading of the podcast that they should look at? Should we take them to a website and have them look at a couple of things so you can describe it? Would that make sense? Kind of hard to do on a radio program, but I guess we could try well, it. <laughs> I, I think that we ought to expand our horizon. So what website should we go to? Mm, why don't we go to hardmoneybooks.com? Hardmoneybooks.com. All right, so that's a new hardmoneybooks.com. Okay, I'm there. Yeah, and this is a website produced by with uh, Steve Replin. Steve Replin wrote a book just recently, uh, and you helped him on this, I believe, right? Mm-hmm, I did. <laughs> Where to go when the bank says no. So mm-hmm. we're just really ramping up the promotion side of this book, and he's already gotten a few sales through the through the book. Some some uh, somebody found his book through uh, through search engines, and there there are just a few people that I've seen um, that ordered this. But again, it's a new site, and we're just about ready to launch a, a, coordinate, a coordinated um, a blog tour. So he's he's really Steve is really aggressive toward getting this message out, and I think that comes back to uh, one of the one of the the topics you brought up before is when when you're talking about um, you know, do I really want to do this? It takes so much time. You know, I, I always hear the same things, and the the answer to that is yeah, all this internet stuff, all the social networking, all the SEO, uh, everything out there on the web. You, you, what will get you through that whole process of needing to learn this, needing to engage in it, needing to hire people to help you with it if you really don't want to do it, is is your message. You need to be so passionate about your message that you're not going to let little stuff like that get in the way. You're mm-hmm. going to get a great website out there. You're going to put in, put time in to coming to the extravaganza and learning how to do all this stuff, or at least learning step-by-step step what has to happen. Whether you are the person that actually implements all this stuff or not is completely immaterial. You, you need to pick what you, what you sort of gravitate to, so what, what you already see yourself doing, what you already know you'll be good at once you learn the, the little techniques. But that's what Steve is doing exactly. He's just following a process for... Go ahead, keep talking. For, for phase one, we've accomplished phase one, and now we're going to get into phase two. All right, so when we come back, we'll touch on phase two. But I think that I want you to point out a couple of things of why you strategically put them on the website. I'll do that when we come right. back. Perfect. All right, this is Judith Bryles, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing with Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. Do you need postcards that make a statement? How about business cards, flyers, brochures, or NCR forms? TuVets is the solution for all your printing needs. Providing services specially designed for authors, we deliver exceptional quality colored printing. Most important of all, we specialize in reducing your printing costs. No more waiting. No more standing in lines at your local printer. Online proofing. With our pricing tools calculator, you can get instant quotes on all your printing products, as well as shipping rates all over the United States. Just a few clicks of the mouse and you're on the way to discovering how easy and convenient online color printing should be. Contact our friendly, human, account representatives. We recognize that you want answers, not voice prompts. Visit our website at www.tu-vets.com or call 
1-800-894-8977. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing questions. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Oh, sometimes I wonder if you could just hear what we talked about off the air, but better that you don't always. Um, but right, right now, as we do, usually at the bottom of the hour, we have a special guest before we get back to Marty. And we have with us Henry Aiella, and Henry is um, two vets. And two vets is one of my favorite printers for all things called postcards and uh, bookmarks and the like. And Henry will be at the extravaganza with some ideas. But welcome, Henry. Hi, uh, Judith. How are you today? I'm great. So what, what's a hot tip we have in the printing of, of complimentary things to support our books? Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, uh, I was uh, hoping just to quickly mention uh, the three most popular items uh, that we print that contribute uh, to a successful marketing uh, program because Perfect. everything that we do, you can add the QR codes and the, the rest of these uh, interactive things that uh, mm -hmm. uh, are complementary to websites and whatnot. Uh, the first thing are, are flyers and brochures, mm -hmm. which is just a folded flyer. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a lot of copy room on those. Uh, you can hand them out. You can mail them. They can be either self-mailers or included in an envelope. Uh, there's uh, groups like uh, IBPA, uh, Independent Book Publishers Association, that does group mailings to all kinds of libraries, uh, and so that's one way to distribute these things. And now the post office has their uh, every door direct mail, uh, which they charge 14 and a half cents, and the carrier delivers to every address on their carrier route. You don't have to address anything. There are certain requirements, but basically, you know, a lot of these things can be mailed out at cheaper than postcard wow. rates now. Wow! I hey Henry, I didn't know about that. So how big yeah, is the mailing? How big is the mailing piece? Uh, the, the, they do require a certain minimum size. I think the minimum is like six and a quarter by eleven. So you can do a large postcard, but you can do. Well, they they want to mail what they call flats, which are the larger pieces, maybe up to an eight and a half by eleven or something like that. Uh, but uh, it's very inexpensive, and if you're doing like a book signing in a particular area, you can have these things mailed uh, specifically to all the surrounding little neighborhoods uh, to that bookstore and uh, draw people in from the area. So it's, well, a, it's a great that, thing that the post office is doing now. Now, that's a fabulous idea, and why don't any of us know about that? 
it's new. It's okay. new. The post office is, is introducing this. I mean, it's new like within a, a a couple of three months, you know. But uh, uh, this is something that you can talk to us about, or talk to your local printers. I mean, they they should have this information. The post office obviously has that information too. But um, so that's one good thing. The other are the bookmarks, which are um, uh, real popular because even though eBooks are coming on so strongly, most readers, most purchasers of books, either eBooks or paper books will have a library of books. Everybody needs bookmarks if you're a reader. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're, they're a little mini uh, brochure for you, and people mm-hmm. tend to keep them because they're useful. And so, and they'll pass them around. I mean, if they're so inexpensive that you buy more than you think you need and give two and three away to somebody because they'll pass them on if they don't use them. Exactly. And, okay. And the last thing would be our postcards. Again, uh, inexpensive for regular type mailings. It's a, if you go with a four by six postcards, they will um, mail at the postcard rate, and that's first class mail, mm-hmm. and um, gets there quickly and uh, gives you a little bit more room to to do some quick promotions. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, I think postcards are a fabulous way to market, and I think that for all our listeners, they need to understand that there is so much e stuff out there. Email this, and it who knows where it all goes, but it doesn't always get through. Where, exactly, and it, and the printed pieces are a good way to drive people to your websites. I mean, there's yeah. lots of studies out there now that show that people are real comfortable getting the, these mailing pieces because they feel a confidence in them, and then it, they order through the website. So it's Perfect. You tie everything together. Great. Well, thank you. Three great tips. Postcards, brochures, and let the postman market to a specific area for you for a fraction of what a letter costs. Sounds great to me, Henry. Exactly. Okay, Judith, uh, they can contact us at twovets.com. Great. We'll see you in a few weeks at the extravaganza. Absolutely. Looking forward to it, Judith. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Hey, Marty, did you know that? Did you know that the post office will do a direct mail piece for you for fractions? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> what good information. Wow. Uh, there's always more, right? <laughs> oh, well, I think that's actually for, for a, a local business, like a, a bookstore, to have the postman deliver something like that to everyone and, and create a great-looking flyer or postcard. I think that's a great idea. That would be awesome. Yeah, awesome. Okay, let's come back to the Replin website. Okay. So as we look at it, let's describe it for, there's no reason why we can't describe this yeah, for our listeners. So and I, I'm going to just tell you, I'm looking at it straight on, and there's a nice picture of Steve on the upper left. I like the way it pops up a little bit over the line. Um, the book's on the right. And, of course, why do we want to have the book on the right, Marty? Uh-huh. Well, the top okay. right corner of a website is the most important part of a website. It's, it's actually so important it has its own name. It's called the URQ, and that's an acronym for Upper Right Quadrant. And you know you're really important when you have your own acronym. So URQ is, stands for Upper Right Quadrant, and that is the very first place that the eye is drawn when somebody gets to a website. So to people who have, who have had websites for years, it, there's a pretty good chance they've already heard that someplace about where the eye gets drawn. And on Google, when you're searching for something, your eye's drawn in a different way. And, and if, if you're looking at a, a newsletter, your eye is drawn to a different spot. But for a website, when you're surfing around, you, you wind up on somebody's website, the top right corner is where you land. And that mm-hmm. is the most critical piece right there because you want to accomplish a couple of things. Number one, you want to, uh, you want to prove right then and there that that you, that you have the content that people are looking for uh, very quickly because you only have like two seconds, maybe maybe three, if it's windy outside or something, <laughs> to, uh, yeah. to convince someone that they need to stay on this website longer. So you need to really be on your toes and, and use that upper right quadrant to prove that. And then people are going to, uh, and that's why we have his book right on the top corner because the way he is promoting this book and plans to promote the book, there's going to be people coming to this website specifically looking for the book and how much it costs and what kind of quantities can I get. So we wanted to have that right in the corner and we have uh, an order button right there and then we have another button that is that is for details. 
So it's really critical to, to show people as much information as they need to make an informed decision whether to buy the book or not. And, and you know, here we get into that whole copywriting thing. Do I have three bullet points in an introductory two sentences and that's enough to sell the book? Or do I have one of these 50-page sales letters? Well, uh, the, the sales letters have, are still around. I see people promoting $5,000 conferences still using these giant sales letters. And there's only one, one reason why they would do that, and that's because that's what converts. So you, you decide how much content you need to sell your book on your website based on testing. So you, you put some content on there, you watch your traffic, you see how many sales you get, and then you try mixing up something. Change your headline, add some more testimonials, and see if that changes your your uh, conversion rate on your sales. And you know, interestingly enough, Judith, I have a little formula on the Here Next Year website. I have this this uh, membership area on our website. And for this, uh, there's a, a free level that anybody can go to. It's becoming really popular. I have about 1,200 members in this now. And uh, what you do is just go to the Here Next Year website, look for the members area, and start an account on there. Again, it's it's free, but there's a tool in there called the Traffic Estimator. And it's some, I can't even tell you what the formula it is. It took, us a, it took us a long time to figure this out, and I had my programmer put it together. But I look at this all the time. I use this thing about three times a week. And what it does is it allows me me to put in how much I want to make, how much money do I want to make, and, and let's just say $10,000 in sales. And say my book is an average, well, actually, I think uh, Steve's book is $24.95, but I'm just going to put mm-hmm. in 24 bucks for an average sales price. And let's say that he gets a 1.5 conversion rate, and it's 1.5% conversion rate, and that means one point. 5% of anybody who comes to the website actually winds up buying the book. Well, I need to that page, not just the website itself, I need to the very page where someone puts in their credit card number, they see the copywriting for the book, I need 27,778 visitors to the website. Okay? That's a staggering number. And, and I'd say 1.5 conversion rate is really high. I'll bet most people, most websites average about a 0.25, maybe a 0.4 or 0.5 if they're lucky. So I'm going to aim high and say 1.5. That's a lot of traffic that you have to have to your website to make $10,000 in sales. And again, I, I, I say that because I, I still think that, that we're, we're really kicking ourselves out there. I think a lot of people are really down in themselves that I've only sold one book this month or two books this month. Well, what kind of traffic are you getting? No, I'm only getting 300 visits a month on my website. Well, how do you expect to make $10,000 a month in book sales? <laughs> Well, let's talk about that monetizing when we come back after our final break. This is Judith Bryles. My guest this hour is Marty Dickinson of Here Next Year, and we're talking websites. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Writing and reading are moving to the cloud. WaveCloud represents a whole new community for writers and readers to connect, communicate, evaluate, and share. Writers hone their craft and build their business. Readers build their favorites. Sign up for updates at wavecloud.com. shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems, you want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, or by a publishing service provider, or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd if you want to create a book with no regrets. Give her a call today, 303 
303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207. Or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. So Marty and I are talking about websites, and I, I said, well, let's, let's go. So everyone, while you're talking about a website, if you will go as you listen to this to Hard Money Books, and that is plural, hardmoneybooks.com, and we're talking about a website, and it's around a book called Where to Go When the Bank Says No, and haven't we all experienced that? The author is Steve Replin. And Marty has done a total morphing and redesign, and I think one of the things that's nice about it is the simplicity of it. Um, that you're not so overwhelmed and it's not cluttered, right? And so, Marty, take it from there. Mm-hmm. And, well, I'd also suggest that uh, because of the numbers that we were talking about in the, the, last, um, the last section here Segment? before the break, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you really have to have well, a web marketing plan. I mean, you, it's just like a business plan. You have to have a traffic-building plan, and that's why at the extravaganza I'm going to spend my uh, amount of time on getting traffic from Google, from Google organic search, because it's still, after all these years, such an important component of getting traffic, targeted traffic to your website. And that was the number one thing we wanted for this website. I mean, that's why his, his book is called where, the, where to Go When the Bank Says No. But people aren't searching for that. They're searching for hard money issues. So all of his blog posts are all about the, the, uh, uh, they're all tied into alternative investing and hard money lending and getting money for your business. So, we're, again, we're, we're just <laughs> really just starting to build this out. But the plan is the same thing as we would do for any other client because you, you start out with phase one, you're building the website, you get all these components into place, and then there's phase two where you start building the traffic. And, and so I, I went over the numbers about how you, you, if you have that, you know, $10,000 in sales a month that you want to get and your price for your book is $24 and you've got a 1.5% conversion rate, you need more than 25,000 visitors a month to your sales page just to get that kind of, of money. So, and, and with that kind of conversion rate, that means that more than 95%, anyway, on average, are not going to buy your book. So what happens to them? What, what do they, hopefully they'll maybe go to, check out a blog post or something, but you, you really need to capture them. So still, mm-hmm. another thing that is so important is list building, capturing those people that do come onto your website and offering something for free. And this is nothing new. It's just I think people have gotten away from it. I think people have, have uh, lessened the importance of offering something free and getting people on your list and sending out emails. 
And I, I'm just saying that I, I'm living proof. I have email lists. I send out things to people, and they buy from the lists. <laughs> so it is my primary strategy still after all these years to build my list continuously. And that's why on Steve's website, in a very pronounced place, in a very pronounced color, color to attract attention, we have free sign up for the, uh, the Find Money report. Get immediate access to Steve's report and get occasional tips and news alerts by email. And I'd even suggest that that's something that we need to test to even make more strong as an offer, something that is so compelling that people cannot help it but sign up to get it. So you, you really need to focus on, on uh, creating something that's not only a free giveaway, but something that's really a, a, a good deal. Like on, on my website, herenextyear.com, the, the number one download I have is 101 realistic methods for getting traffic to a website. Pretty long title there, but it works. And I, I have a 16% average opt-in when people get to that page they they sign up to get that and they use that for their entire web marketing plan for the next two years because they can use all these ways to get traffic and it's free so you need to come up with something that's that compelling and that important to people uh, uh, cast a wide net uh, that a wide variety of people are going to want and that is the key to getting those opt-ins but that's the main components yeah. of that website Oh, that sounds ideal. All right. So I had a, a couple of questions because we just have, oh, like eight minutes left here. So, Marty, what do you think of some of the, what are some of the do's and don'ts that if you were to, to sit down with someone um, or just advising them? So what are some of the do's that they should do? What are some of the don'ts that they well, should do? Yeah, I would say that you do want to get your book on Amazon, but you also do want to look into the possibility of taking orders yourself and eventually your your business is going to grow you're going to want to take orders yourself you're going to want to sell things that uh, amazon won't let you sell so you the, the opportunity will come for you to get a shopping cart and then you can um, get a shopping cart that takes your that has all your email broadcasts in there and you can build your list through there and that answer is premium web cart so if you're looking for a shopping cart that's the way to do it eventually if your book is good enough you're going to be asked to speak and you're to speak on your topic, speak on your book and travel the world and get on stage. And, and when that happens, you're going to start building a big enough following that eventually you're going to get the idea to start a membership website. And the same thing applies. Premium web cart's the place to be because it's got all these things that are integrated in that whole process. Uh, the other do that I would say is do accept orders through PayPal, but don't only accept orders through PayPal <laughs> because there's a, a certain amount of people out there that just will not buy things through PayPal. So eventually mm -hmm. you will need to get your own internet capable merchant account and give people the choice to buy whether if they want to pay through PayPal, great. If you want to pay through this other standard non-PayPal process, then here's where you go. And that's all built into premium web cart too. Well, and and that's and I should say to all our listeners, we use Premium Web Cart at um, at Author U, and it's been fairly fairly efficient it's um, what I'm for us. All of our clients, it is it's, it's the one product I've ever seen where I can make a suggestion for an, a new enhancement and have the enhancement added to the system in under two weeks. I've done it four times now. I've asked for little things to be added, and they go into the software and they 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 improve it. it it's it's just mind-boggling. Coming from a software background, stuff like that would take two or three years to get implemented in a, into a, a wish list, so to speak, for mm -hmm. uh, for new software. So, yeah, Ma really good Marty, thing. what's what's the time that you would go over and do a switch over from going from, let's say, PayPal to a premium web cart? To th that, I mean, I think that there is, or any kind of shopping cart, because I know that we did that transition where we were doing just PayPal and then we we ditched it. Yep. I, I would actually say to start out with something like premium web card if you can afford it. I mean, I, yeah. I, I think there's a, that line where uh, where a lot of people write books and it's just kind of a hobby, and if they make a little bit of money, that's great. But there's other people that I mean, this is a business, and to to put a hundred bucks into a, a shopping cart is not a big deal when it's your business, and when you're making ten thousand dollars a month. In sales, the last thing you're going to be thinking about is, oh gosh, I could have saved twenty dollars a month if I only went with this other system. I should have gone. You know, I should have gone with that. No, I mean, start with the one that works. And I know I get that. All right. So, it, what are let's let's go over some don'ts or some of some of the mistakes. If you were to say, what are the what are the three biggest consistent mistakes? 
that you see that by the time you get some of these websites, you have to do a makeover with? What are the three consistent mistakes that you see that seem to be carried? Uh, well, probably not testing for multiple browsers. A lot of the designers out there will make mm. a website and it only works on Internet Explorer, but the minute that you put uh, Chrome, that you use Chrome or Firefox, all of a sudden the columns are adjusted wrongly and it, it's just, it just looks horrible. Okay, all right. So, <laughs> uh, that, so That's one. Um, number okay. two is having a bad picture of yourself. That, that's got to be Ugh. one of the number one things. I've seen so many websites where you look at the picture and it's just scary. I, I don't even want to look at the person. I want to hit the back button just so I'm not looking at, at the person anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so get a real good professional picture and even test with photos, Not maybe not even looking directly back at the person. You know, like Steve's on here, hardmoneybooks.com. Uh, his his eyes are looking right at me as I look at the at the screen. Experiment with having your eyes look away a little bit. And because some people, they just react differently to that. So there's all kinds of mm-hmm. things you can test with that. And mm-hmm. probably, I mean, just the basic thing. The most important thing is having contact information. That's why we put the, the contact button always on the right, on the top navigation. We don't want people to miss it. Uh, put your street address on there if you have an office. Put your phone number on there. If you want to really stand out, put your phone number on your website. But not having any contact information on your website is actually very common. It's like people just sort of oh, skip it, and it's it, just really annoying. <laughs> it, it, it is It is probably my single pet peeve that mm-hmm. there are a lot of times I try, I want to drop someone a note, or like when Henry was on, I send postcards to people. And I can't find that. I, I, you know, I will explore that site trying to find. I mean, so if so, if you work out of your home, well, so do gazillions of other people. Get a PO box if you're afraid someone's going to come up at your door. Sure. But get some kind of snail mail presence mm-hmm. um, that you can do it. I, I just think it's more professional. It makes sense. Why make people work? I mean, I've gone on Google trying to find. Uh, 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 addresses and yeah. have struck out on several people and I want to say that's when I say literally screw it yeah. you're not I mean I'm not going to spend any more time and I delete them yeah well and, and video is, is kind of the same way I think people look at video as being a, um, a, a hindrance it's too personal they, they're afraid to get their face on the internet or something like that and mm-hmm. I, I think that's that's also I put that in my list of of uh, don't let anybody steer you away from putting video on your website. You really need to have video, and I'd even suggest having um, 5 to 10 to 15 to 20 snippets of a video, just a small 20, 30, or second topic-oriented videos in various places of your website. But uh, we are living in a video society right now. Yeah, so. <laughs> and that's what we need. So I'm going to close up here. Clearly, we have to have you back again, <laughs> and we'll do that. But if you want to hear more of Marty Dick, and his insights and snappy ideas and really how to make your websites rock and roll as well as how to use Google. Sign up for the extravaganza at authoryou.org. Next week, George McCabe will be with us and we are going to be talking about Pinterest as well as all kinds of things that this branding expert using the Internet will be sharing with you. I'm Judith Bryles. You're listening to your guide to book publishing. Don't forget, sign up for the extravaganza at authoryou.org. Your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles.